Welcome to Daikin web-based training. Let's take a look at an overview of VRV control wiring and precautions when wiring. In this course, we will be taking a look at an overview of VRV control wiring, precautions when wiring, and examples of miswiring. Daikin's unique high-speed multiplex transmission system, D3Net, is used for Daikin VRV systems. With D3Net, the connection between the indoor and outdoor units within a system, as well as that between one system and other systems, must be done in a daisy chain manner. Please use either sheathed vinyl cord or cable for the control wiring. Though there is no need to use shielded wire, if doing so, be sure to only ground one side of it. If shielded wire is not properly grounded on one side, it could disrupt communications. Also, Use the same type of wire for all the control wiring within the same system. Mixing different types of wires within a system can result in poor communication. Use AWG18 copper wire for the control wiring. Using wire thinner than AWG18 will result in unstable transmission due to a drop in voltage as well as allow the control wiring to be more easily affected by noise. Moreover, two wires cannot be inserted into the terminal block if they are too thick. Be sure to always use wire with the specified size. Never use multi-core cables with more than two cores. If they are used, signal interference will occur, resulting in transmission malfunction. Be sure to always use two core cables. Now, let's learn about precautions when wiring. When wiring, the first item we must think about is the maximum wiring length. It should be no longer than 3,280 feet. As for the example shown, the maximum length is the A, D, E, C route. In this case, the route adds up to 2,360 feet, so there is no problem. The next item we need to think about is the total wiring length. The total wiring length should be no longer than 6,560 feet. If shielded wires are used, the total length is reduced to no longer than 4,920 feet. As for the example shown, the total length is the sum of all the wiring lengths from A to F. In this case, they add up to 2,730 feet, so there is no problem. The next item is the number of indoor and outdoor units to be connected. Up to 128 indoor units can be connected, and up to 10 outdoor units can be connected. However, any number of multi-outdoor units in a system are considered as one unit. As per the diagram here, for example, even though the actual number of outdoor units is 5, the number of outdoor units connected should be considered as 3. The next precaution to be considered is the distance from the power wiring. When the power wiring and signal wiring are laid in parallel, it induces waves that interfere with the signal wiring. This is due to the impact of the electrostatic coupling and electromagnetic coupling which causes malfunctions. When installing the signal wiring in parallel with the power wiring, it is recommended that the respective minimum distances indicated in the table above be applied. For Daikin products, install the signal wiring at least 2 inches away from the power wiring. If the power wiring is for another company's product, use a distance of at least 1 to 4.9 feet between these two types of wiring based on the current running through the power wiring as per the table above. The next item is the polarity. The control wiring carries direct current, but polarity is not an issue, so the terminal numbers do not need to match. Even when the control wiring from the F1 terminal is connected to the F2 terminal or vice versa, there are no problems. Now, let's take a look at the next item, the prohibition on bundling. If the control wiring is bundled over an extended distance, it shortens the insulation distance between the wiring, subjecting the transmission signals to interference. Therefore, never bundle the control wiring. The next item we need to consider is the terminal block connection. Be sure to connect up to two wires of the same size to the terminal block for the control wiring. If wires with different sizes are connected, the thinner of the two cannot be tightened properly and this can cause poor contact. Moreover, use only up to two wires on a terminal block, as three wires cannot be inserted. The next item is a precaution when connecting a single system. 
With regard to the control wiring between the indoor and outdoor units, connect the indoor units F1 and F2 terminals to the outdoor units in, out, F1 and F2 terminals. In the case of multi-outdoor units, connect the master and slave units using the Q1 and Q2 terminals. There is no particular polarity, so the terminal numbers do not need to match. The next item is a precaution when connecting multiple systems. If conducting centralized control by connecting with other systems, connect to them using the out, out, F1 and F2 terminals on the master outdoor unit. Also, connect central devices such as a centralized controller to these terminals. In this case, again, there is no particular polarity, so the terminal numbers do not need to match. If bundling the control wiring along with the refrigerant piping, align the wiring with the space between the gas and liquid piping. This can prevent damage to the control wiring in the event any external force is applied to the piping. Depending on the country, bundling the refrigerant piping together with the control wiring is prohibited. Conduct any work upon confirming the respective rules and regulations. The wiring must be seamless. If not, rain can leak in at the point of connection, damaging the insulation and causing a short circuit, ultimately resulting in malfunctions. Let's now take a look at some examples of miswiring. Control wiring must be connected in a daisy chain manner. The indoor unit must not be branched as shown in the diagram. The connections between an outdoor unit and an indoor unit as well as between an outdoor unit to another outdoor unit must all be done in one line. Bus wiring, as shown on the diagram, is prohibited. Be sure to connect an outdoor unit to another outdoor unit in a daisy chain manner. Star wiring, as shown on the diagram, is also prohibited. Again, be sure to connect an outdoor unit to another outdoor unit in a daisy chain manner. Now, let's take a look at an example of miswiring where the control wiring from an indoor unit in a system is misconnected to an outdoor unit in a different system. In such a case, the startup operation of an indoor unit in one system actually starts up an outdoor unit in a different system, preventing the desired system from operating properly. This occurs quite frequently when refrigerant piping and control wiring from several systems are close together without correct identification. In order to prevent this kind of miswiring, try to mark or label all the control wiring in order to indicate which control wiring is for which system. This is a miswiring example where one system is connected to another system on the indoor unit side. As shown on the diagram, indoor units connected to the System 1 outdoor unit and indoor units connected to the System 2 outdoor unit are connected on the indoor unit side, which results in a problem because all these indoor units are recognized as one system. Therefore, never connect systems on the indoor unit side.